At the end of this video, I will be dead. In the next 15 minutes, someone will knock down the door, storm the house and shoot me. Because the stuff that I'm going to discuss today has never been discussed before in front of a public. Sir, this is not correct. All the documentation is available in the public domain. Thank you, Otis. You just completely ruined the best intro I've ever come up with. <sighs> So the F-35 is currently the technologically most advanced aircraft in the world. For stealth. Totally stealth. You can't see it. It is famous for its stealth, but stealth is progressively losing the effectiveness that it has been demonstrated since when it was introduced at the beginning of the 80s. It is also a technology that is becoming increasingly commoditized and it is no longer the asymmetric advantage in the hands of the United States Air Force that it used to be. And the Air Force is well aware. Actually, the obsession for stealth is still there, but the F-35 has other aces up its sleeve. Leave. It is fusion. Well, not this type of fusion. <laughs> it could be sensor fusion, data fusion, information fusion. They are different concepts, but they serve two purposes. One, give the pilot the situational awareness that is so important in air operations. Two, optimize the resources available in order to operate according to the priorities, which basically means shoot the most dangerous first. In other words, the F-35 gives the pilot so much more information than any four generation platform. And a good pilot can do a lot with that. And it is somewhat ironic, the advantage of the F-35 is based on an abstract immaterial technology. Algorithms make the difference between having the air dominance or just being a contender among the others. Those algorithms are a good portion of the American superiority in the aerospace domain. There are five main sensors on the F-35 and each one of those is probably the best money can buy in its field. The AN-APG-81 radar, the AN-ASQ-239 electronic warfare and countermeasure system, the AN-AAQ-40 electro-optical targeting system, the AN-AAQ-37 electro-optical distributed aperture system, the AN-ASQ-242 communication, navigation and identification system. Getting into the details of each one of those is basically another video for each system. What's important to understand for now is that each one of these sensors produces a wealth of data that the aircraft distills in a picture that is actually presented to the pilot or to other systems on board of the aircraft or off board. And by the way, in the case of the F-35, communication system is treated like a sensor because data flow into the aircraft from the outside through the data link. So sensor fusion is not new, it is not even a new concept. And to be honest, sensor fusion has many applications, even civilian applications, and probably the Air Force arrived quite late at the party. Staying in the military, this kind of fusion doesn't happen only in fighter jets. The work that is done by the Combat Operations Center on a ship, the work done in a battalion headquarters, they are all forms of sensor data and information fusion. The first generation of data fusion were based on correlating all the tracks and selecting the best one. The aircraft receives data from the radar, the infrared sensors, the data link, correlates them to make sure that they represent the same object, and then it either selects the best or just blends the data together. This, for example, is the kind of fusion that is available on the Eurofighter or in the first generation of the Gripen, probably. And it works. And actually, 
it works quite well. However, this approach has intrinsic limitations. If you choose the best track, you're probably throwing away other informations that could be useful. If you blend different tracks, but these are not updated exactly at the same frequency, exactly the same time, that time discrepancy is enough to degrade the quality of the track. He forgot to explain what a track is. A track is a snippet of information representing a relevant object identified by the sensor. A radar will generate a blip on the screen associated with distance, azimuth, speed, altitude, acceleration, and other properties. A record of these properties, representing a potential real object, is called a track. Thank you Otis, always precious. When the Americans started designing the F-22 in quite an unashamedly American way, they decided to go the full Monty. They decided to implement sensor and data fusion on steroids. They implemented the so-called closed-loop sensor fusion. And the F-35 later went even farther ahead with this technology, causing that dreaming look in the eyes of the pilot that fly the aircraft for the first time. So, conceptually it works like this. There is a stage where sensor data and track data from offboard sensors are collected. These data are correlated and a set of track is identified. And these data are obviously propagated to all the systems that need them, for example the human-machine interface, or for example the weapons, or eventually other aircraft through the data link. Every track comes with an estimation of its quality, position, speed, altitude, direction, acceleration, identification, how much are they reliable. This is an information included in the track. Yes, because in real life things go wrong and none of these attributes is immune from errors. Then, tracks are prioritized. That is, the system investigates the highest priority tracks automatically. For example, if you have a Su-30 that is nose hot and at about 30 miles, well, it's probably more relevant than a flight of MiG-29 uh, cold uh, 200 miles away. So there is a sensor scheduler that automatically allocates the most appropriate sensor to investigate the high priority tracks. For example, it could point the radar toward said Su-30. And then the cycle starts again. You understand that the pilot is no longer required to fiddle with the radar, the frequency, the PRF, the elevation or anything else. He is not required to make sense of the strange symbology that appears on the radar warning receiver. Everything is done automatically. It is presented as a coherent picture already integrated to the pilot and the pilot will decide how to act on it. Well, or just do nothing and hope for the best, I suppose. That's an approach too. Probably a, an approach to life, actually. But I digress. Mind, this technology is not secret, nor it is particularly advanced. There is nothing secret in this idea of closed-loop sensor fusion. It is taught in universities. Designing sensors and systems that actually use it, well, that is challenging. And it is challenging because it is complex, but even in that case, there is really no secret technology behind that. Every major aerospace nation can build its own integration. And a few beside the United States actually did. I'm not 100% certain, but I am relatively sure that the Gripen EF and the Rafale F4 have at least some form of this type of integration. The Suhoi 57 has been designed natively to make use of this type of fusion. However, closed loop fusion is only part of the picture. The way it is algorithmically implemented is as important as the correct application of the concept. And the way it was implemented on the F-35 is quite clever. On the aircraft there is a software component which is the data fusion engine. It manages the tracks that are produced by different sensors but it's 
main function is to isolate the data producers and the data consumers. It receives the data created by each data producer, the tracks created by each data producer, but it provides to each data consumer only the data that the consumer requires. In this way, if you add new data, new sensors, you only have to update the engine and not all the data consumers. The methodology used by the producers and the fusion engine to generate the tracks is very clever. So when a track is generated by a sensor, there are several measures of its quality associated with it. And this includes the bias of the sensors, that is how the sensors have been regulated to generate the data that were used to create the track. All this information, all these data on the F-35 come with the track. This quality measure on the F-35 implementation is expressed through the covariance of the sensor measurements. This is a mathematical way of characterizing the track. It tells us how interrelated are the various measures and how dispersed they are. This is a lot of data associated to each track. But the flip side is that we know much more about it and how it was obtained. I'm actually trying to skip all the mathematics associated with this subject and trying to give you a qualitative idea. So I beg forgiveness for those in the know and for everybody else, please bear with me. When the fusion engine fuses the tracks, it uses a mathematical methodology which is called a filter. The superstar for this kind of application is the Kalman filter and its derivatives. We spoke about the Kalman filter in a very old video and you can watch it if you're interested in digging a bit deeper into this subject. For now, if enough to know that the presence of the covariance in the track data allows us to calculate the terms that go into the filter in a way that gives the right weight, the right importance to every specific measurement, and it avoids the kind of mathematical pitfalls that may happen when you are doing this kind of calculations. Under certain conditions, this filter may, for example, diverge and produce nothing, no result at all, no fusion at all. It becomes incapable of correlating that specific track. The approach used on the F-35 avoids most of this. What does it mean in practice? It means that the algorithms used on the F-35 are very, very robust and do this at the expense of shuffling around and elaborating much more data than other legacy implementations. And this is one of the reasons why a custom data link was developed for the F-35. The metal data link must handle this large amount of data associated with the tracks. The data exchange between two F-35s are much richer than the data that are exchanged through legacy data links like the Link 16. In fact, the F-35 broadcasts all this track information to the other ships so each ship can rebuild the whole picture autonomously. Other legacy data link in use do have measures of the track quality but they are much, much simpler. This creates from one side the compatibility problems because, well, the two formats are different. One is much more complex than the other, but it also creates some pretty subtle mathematical problems that, please forgive me, but I'm not going into. The F-35 Fusion engine, though, can cope with both of these problems, while the opposite is not necessarily true. When you hear that the F-35 could be the centerpiece or the quarterback of a flight of fourth generation aircraft, this is exactly what they mean. It's not for the stealth and it's not for the sensor, or, or at least it's not just for those. It is the availability on the legacy data links 
of extremely high quality tracks that are generated by the fusion engine on the F-35 and then broadcast it to the other aircraft in the formation. This is the reason why we have news from Syria, for example, of aircraft that have expanded all the stores that had completed the mission but still remained in theater. The reason was to keep providing this kind of intelligence to the other aircraft. I think I need a coffee now. Okay, 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 but we are still not done. What we've seen so far is pretty much half of the world. There's an entire new class of issues that the F-35 tackles better than other platforms. How to identify the targets, how to communicate with other assets. All of this has been greatly advanced on the F-35, but, well, this will be the subject of another video. Thank you very much for being here at this point of the video and thank you very much to all those who are supporting the channel. You can also support the channel by buying a model from Air Models. There is an affiliate link below. I will get a small percentage and there will be no extra cost for you. In the meanwhile, thank you. What? What? Hey! What? What is it?